1994, Koenigsegg Automotive built the Koenigsegg CC prototype. Now, much like Christian von Koenigsegg's facial hair at the time, the car needed some work. But skip 20 odd years forwards, they're now building some of the greatest and most beautiful technological masterpieces of the 21st century. But in 2007, they built a car that would later become the rarest car they ever produced, the one of one race car, the CC GT. Now with thanks to Bonhams here at Goodwood, I'm able to show you around this unicorn of a race car. Built to compete in the ACO GT1 category of Le Mans, this car had to meet certain regulations, such as under two meters wide, had to weigh 1,100 kilos, and the cockpit had to take up 70% of the car. And in true Koenigsegg fashion, they made the car too light, so they actually had to add ballast to make this meet regulations. Launched in 2007 at the Paris Motor Show, the car was actually a passion project for Christian and the boys back in the factory. Based off a of Koenigsegg CCR, but certain aspects from the CCX, such as the headlights, the CC GT was actually the first ever car to feature Koenigsegg's very own 5 litre naturally aspirated V8, producing over 600 brake horsepower and strapped to a 6 speed Chima sequential gearbox with paddles. This really led the way to Koenigsegg's future. Now, the CC GT is actually one of the very few Koenigseggs to feature normal doors because obviously we all know that the Koenigseggs feature the Synchro Helix dihedral actuation doors. Now, try saying that when you're drunk. But if we move forwards, the car also has a racing jack system where you attach an airline to it and jacks will pop out from the car, lifting the car, making it able to be worked on in high speed environments such as a pit lane. The suspension, it's on double wishbone pushrod suspension, also features highly adjustable gas shock absorbers and was really leading the way to what is now the triplex suspension. So the body is made out of pre-impregnated carbon Kevlar weave, also features this massive picnic table of a wing, which obviously gave endless downforce. But as I said, this car was very much a passion project for a company at the time who were very small. Looking at the back of the car, you can see certain similarities from the CCR and the CCX, such as these brake lights and indicators. But this is fairly different. This exhaust is probably the biggest exhaust I've ever seen. Now, some people say, can I fit a finger in or two fingers? No, I can put my whole hand and arm in this exhaust. That is ludicrous. Now, it's even clean. So that shows how little this car has been used. But talking of use, I want to tell you about some of the drivers of this car. Working our way up from the bottom to the top then, Bard Ecker, a man who owns Ecker Design and is currently the sole owner of this car and has been since day one. Ecker Design helped Chris in the early days develop and design the CCR and the CCX and other such vehicles. And obviously he believed in the brand because up until today, he owns this car and has done since day one. Going up, Christian Koenigsegg. Well, if you don't know who he is, stop living under a rock. And then the man on the top, the test driver for endless vehicles, Loris. Now Loris started being born next to the Lamborghini factory. He worked at Lamborghini, then was introduced to Horatio Pagani, helped develop the Zonda, then went to Bugatti with such things as the EB110. He then later on for Bugatti did the Veyron, and then he went to other companies such as Dallara, KTM, Koenigsegg. I mean, the list goes on, but you get the picture. The interior of this car is very minimalistic, so much so that there's almost nothing that resembles a Koenigsegg inside. But what would you expect from a Le Mans car? What you will notice though, is this stunning carbon fiber. Now carbon fiber was surprisingly the downfall of this car's history. See, months before the finishing development of this car, the FIA decided to change the rules on the car, stating that carbon monocoques were no longer allowed and instead of 120 or so cars being developed over however many years were needed, there had to be 350 cars made in a year. And for a company that practically only just started, that was never going to be possible. But now with thanks to Bonham's motoring here at Goodwood Festival of Speed, there will be in a few days a new owner. And hopefully they will be using it for its intended purpose. Because I tell you what, I would love to see this car blasting around a track being used for its intended purpose. So I'd like to give a special thanks to Bonhams here at Goodwood for allowing us really exciting access to a car that, well, in my world is just a unicorn. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.
Cheers.